me first let you know what it is we are looking at here. So this is a kidney that has been cut in half. There is a portion of the kidney that you see here that's in yellow with these tubules. This section here has been cut out and zoomed in at this panel here. So this is this structure here called the nephron and it's blown up. This is a renal corpuscle, so is this and this. If I were to take one of the renal corpuscles and cut that open, then I would get this opened half of a renal corpuscle here. We're going to start with the kidney and work our way around. This portion here that you see in brown, and if we were able to turn it around, you'd see more brown. This is the renal capsule. A renal capsule. It surrounds the kidney. This outer portion of the kidney is called the renal cortex. The renal cortex. If I go deeper, now I get to these structures here called the renal pyramids. And this level or this layer is called the renal medulla. The renal medulla. Once I get to this area here, this area is referred to as the renal pelvis, the renal pelvis. So we've got the capsule, the cortex, the medulla, and the pelvis, and those would be the layers. So let's first look at how blood flows in the kidney. Oxygenated blood from the heart is going to exit the heart through the aorta. Blood's going to go through the ascending aorta, through the aortic arch, and then down to the thoracic aorta. So the thoracic aorta is going to branch off to form this renal artery here. Now the renal artery is going to split, forming what we call the segmental arteries. The segmental arteries. The segmental arteries are going to bifurcate or split once again, forming an interlobar artery, interlobar artery. And it's called an interlobar because one of the pyramids along with its cortex is considered a lobe. So that would be a lobe, this would be a lobe. So this is the interlobar artery. After that, the interlobar artery is going to start moving transversely and this makes up the arcuate artery the arcuate artery. Now I have branches off of the arcuate artery and these are called the interlobular arteries or cortical radiate arteries. Cortical radiate arteries. Once I'm at the cortical radiate arteries, at that point I can enter into what we call the nephron and this is one view of the nephron here. So I'm going to switch over to here so we can get a better view. This is the arcuate artery. This is the cortical radiant artery. I have a artery that comes into the renal corpuscle. That artery is called the afferent arterial. Afferent arterial. Once blood goes into the afferent arterial, that blood begins to be filtered here. And it's going to be separated into portions that are going to go through the renal tubules here to form urine or return to the blood supply of the body. The portion of blood that returns to the circulatory system is going to return through the efferent arterial. Okay, so efferent arterial goes in, efferent goes out. All right, so the efferent arterial. After that, we're going to get to the interlobular veins or corticoradiant veins. From there, we go to the arcuate vein. And then if I go back here, I can see the arcuate veins are going to drain into the interlobar veins. And the interlobar veins are going to merge together to form the renal vein. Now you'll notice the only difference between the pathways is the veins don't have a segmental vein. So now that I've talked about the blood circulation, let's go into more detail on the formation of urine. So if we zoom into the nephron, we're going to see this here. Now, this is a renal corpuscle and this whole thing is a renal corpuscle. I've got the Bowman's capsule 
which is this outer portion here. Omens capsule, and then all of this here in pink is the glomerulus, the glomerulus. And I have this web of cells that are actually going to cover the glomerulus. Those are called podocytes or foot cells, podocytes. This is the proximal tubule, all right? This is the distal tubule. Here at one is the afferent. So this would be the afferent arterial, and this would be the efferent arterial. So the precursor to urine is now going to leave the renal corpuscle and travel through all of this here. Now collectively, all of these tubules here are considered renal tubules, but they have different areas. This first portion here, where it has all these convolutions, is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule. This entire loop here is called the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle. This portion is the descending arm of the loop of Henle. And this is the ascending arm of the loop of Henle. As I follow the ascending arm of the loop of Henle upward, I get to another mess of convoluted tubes. This is the distal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule. At this point, the distal convoluted tubules from a bunch of different nephrons are gonna empty into what we call the collecting duct the collecting duct, which is here. And just to help with the orientation, this entire outer portion is renal cortex. And then at B, this would be the outer renal medulla. And at C, we have the inner renal medulla. So if we go back here, here we can see a collecting duct. So the collecting duct is going to travel through a renal pyramid and come to the apex of the renal pyramid. So this tip of the renal pyramid is called the papilla, the papilla or renal papilla. The renal papilla houses a little duct here called the papillary duct, the papillary duct. And the papillary duct drains into the, these cup-like structures here. These structures are called minor calyces each one of these is considered a calyx. So it's calyx is singular. When I have two minor calyces coming together, they merge to form a major calyx, a major calyx. And again, this is called the renal pelvis here. And then um, urine will finally leave the kidney through the ureter, which we see here, the ureter.